afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture in continuation with the series on sociology of re religion in today's lecture we are going to talk about Bronislaw Malinowski's work on magic science and religion now it is very important to understand that religion was at one point of time considered an evolutionary pattern to magic and science and the pattern was that magic gave way to religion and then to science Malinowski as an anthropologist rather one of the founding figures has kind of critiqued this understanding and he, through his understanding of the Trobriand Islanders the place where he did his research he tells us that these three were equally important for the life of the primitive people though they perform different functions so let us try to understand Malinowski's approach or his understanding of magic science and religion to begin with we know that his name was Bronislaw Kaspar Malinowski he was a Polish born social anthropologist and he was working at a time when there was the uh, discipline of anthropology was also emerging so this is a time where he brings in the method of participant observation he is regarded as one of the founding figures of anthropology because till then much of the study was done in the field film of physical anthropology and the understanding was to do laboratory based study book view understanding malinowski was kind of the first anthropologist to give emphasis on field study and that is his understanding that you have to go to the native people to understand their life you cannot understand native life culture religion by looking at it from your own perspective so his his study was based on the trobriand island which is a place in south pacific near new guinea he had spent 4 years doing anthropological research from 1914 to 1918 and kind of let us understand this is also a time when anthropology in contrast to sociology was considered as a study of other society so almost all initially all uh, anthropologists went to other society studied the simple primitive society to arrive at a generalization of religion culture and other dimension of society so he has developed his theory of religion based on the observation he observed the life of the people of the australian uh, uh, trobriand islander and on the basis of that he has given us a functionalist view of religion now malinowski is kind of very uh, considered as very similar to durkheim because durkheim also gives us a functional theory of religion to go back to durkheim's theory which has been covered in the uh, initial lectures on sociology of religion he tells us that religion performs the function of developing the collective consciousness of the participants or of the people and he says that helps in to kind of develop solidarity among people malinowski is a kind of little dif differs from durkheim in the sense that durkheim gives us a structural functional understanding of religion that the structure of interaction the structure of correlations communication helps to uh, religion to bind people malinowski on the other hand gives us a little psychological theory of religion where he will talk about how the primitive people look towards magic science and religion so when we come to the functionalist approach of malinowski he says that religion provided said values behavioral norms that created solidarity between people so this is very similar to what durkheim has said but more than that he says that it is kind of questioning of reinforcing social norms so through the rituals which he discusses in detail the initiation ceremony the marriage rituals the funeral these are occasions in which religion as a set of norms and value becomes very significant big people kind of find themselves attached to that society as a member so he focuses on how the three aspect the three aspects are magic science and religion satisfies human need and that is why his theory is more close to psychological understanding because it is for satisfying human needs that though all three of them are not necessarily coming one after the other but they are coexisting at the same time and depends on what people do is the psychological satisfaction that they are getting from the three 
So, if we look into his larger method or approach of Malinowski, he gives us the theory of universal in particular. Now, what is this? The universal means a practice or an institution, norms, values which are found in all the society. So, it is a universal and particular is something which is very specific to one society. Now, he is trying to arrive at a universal understanding of religion through his participant observation or case study of the Trobriand Islanders. That is why his approach is kind of labeled as the universal in the particular. So, his interest was the study of culture as a universal phenomena. So, every society has a culture, the norms and values. So, it's, they would not find a society which is absent of a culture. That is why he calls it as universal. Whereas, at the level of a culture, there are particular norms specific to each institution. For instance, religion, there are norms which would differ from one society to the other. So, that is the particular. He considers the Trobrian Islander as supreme example of humanity and used the material collected during the field research as supporting evidence of his generalized view on the nature and function of magic and religion. So, though he is only studying one particular society that is the Trobrianders, his findings in terms of the functions of magic and religion, what role it performs in society are kind of considered as universal or that is a generalization. It could be found in more or less every society. And you know when he goes to the field that is the Trobrian Islanders and it, to kind of understand that there was always this kind of a perspective versus the West and the East or the developed and the developing primitive people versus modern industrialized society. And it was always kind of regarded that the primitive people were traditional. They had an absence of scientific knowledge. Why? Because science itself was assumed to be the result of modernity. That is why when Malinowski starts his study, he begins with the basic question do primitive people have any rational outlook, any rational mastery of the surrounding? Now, when we try to understand modernity, it is kind of considered as a move towards rationality. If everything has to be understood through a logical reasoning and that is where this kind of a, a bifurcation is done between primitive people and modern people. That modern people have rational outlook, primitive people lack. So, this is what made Malinowski question that do we think that do they have primitive people have rational scientific outlook or they are kind of doing things just uh, by hook and crook. So, his answer was that yes, they have. It is different that we on the other side that is the modern people are, are unable or fail to understand the perspective of the primitive society. Why he says that they have rational outlook is because of looking into the everyday life from canoe building to gardening to all the other activity without the knowledge, basic understanding of tools and techniques, how were they supposed to do all this work. So, without the knowledge of gardening, the which is the weather, what kind of soil is required, what kind of tools are required, they were very successful in the growth of yam which had a kind of good production which was the most staple food for the Trobrianders. So, he rejects Levis Brew's idea that primitive people have a definite aversion to reasoning. So, this was the, th th the idea which existed prior to Malinowski that primitive people did not have any kind of rational thinking, they could not have reasoning. Malinowski answers the question by showing that every primitive com community is in possession of a considerable store of knowledge based on experience and fashioned by re reason. Else, how were they being able to survive? They were able, they had a very good knowledge of the nature, the changes in nature, the way the waves of the seas, ocean, else how were they kind of doing canoe building and going on the sea. So, that is the reason he rejects the idea that primitive people do not have rational reasoning. To provide evidence, he gives example of behavior related to arts, crafts and economic activities of the Trobrian Islanders. The behavior related to these activity is clearly separate from magic and religion. And it is based on Max Weber 
empirical knowledge and the confidence in logic. So, though the uh, magic and religion are being practiced by the primitive people, it is not that they are just doing it. They have a very good clear idea of how magic performs a different function from what religion is doing and therefore, they have a kind of very good idea of the logic and reasoning of the society. Malinowski kind of defines the idea into taking from Durkheim into sacred and profane that the entire world can be divided into sacred and profane and he puts magic and religion into the sacred and science into the domain of profane. He shows that natives themselves keep the area of profane apart from religion and magic. So, you know you, you have already this understanding that the sacred which is something which is of significance to the society is of greater importance is different from everyday mundane life. So, the two familial domain of religion are sacred and profane and we have already discussed this in the lecture on Durkheim but let us kind of understand what is sacred. Sacred refers to something which is superior to something which is not everyday or ordinary. So, which is something which is out of the way. So, you know we have a ritual not every day, but on a certain special specific occasion. So, everyday mundane is profane. According to Malinowski, religion and magic both fall under the domain of sacred and science under the domain of profane. So, if we go by this then for Malinowski science was something which was helping us in everyday life, in everyday experience how we live our life. So, that implies that the primitive people had a very good idea of science because they were living their life or their experience. It is a different way that their everyday life or their way of dealing with everyday experience was different from the modern industrial society. So, one of these most important classical book which helps us to understand the distinction between magic, religion and science is the work on ma by the title Magic, Science and Religion. And this kind of clearly highlights uh, the ways in which primitive people were able to separate the two domains, the sacred and the profane. In kind of looking about science, magic and religion, Malinowski accepted the traditional western conception of dual reality, the reality of the natural world and the supernatural world. So, you know you all another duality between um, science and religion was the duality between nature and supernatural. So, natural was something which was every day which you could have a control over whereas, supernatural was the unforeseen which had a more dominating influence on the life of the primitive people and this duality was accepted by the primitive people themselves. So, he dwells on the question whether primitive people have only one area of reality in which magic, science and religion are same or that they consider them as three different aspect. So, we know that for sure that they did not consider them as one and the same. They were able to differentiate between the three and for Malinowski science was not derived from magic, but from man's capacity to organize knowledge as demonstrated by the technical skills, gardening, shipbuilding, everyday life which was kind of evidence that they were able to organize the everyday life. So, science was mundane, everyday, profane whereas, magic was not used everyday, it was used exceptional cases where they could not kind of predict what danger could happen. So, to prevent that psychological satisfaction magical rituals were performed. Uh, so, magic was kind of coexisted with these skills. So, why is he saying all three are required? Because each one of them has a different function to perform. On one hand science is enabling you to organize your everyday life, magic is enabling you to take control of this unseen, the unknown uh, dangers and religion is kind of marks the difference between the everyday and the uh, special, special. So, that is why it is kind of considered as uh, coexisting at the same time, but with a different uh, function. Magic and religion falls under the same domain that is the sacred. It has inherent difference though, it's, though he is saying that they are both sacred does not mean that they are the same. They are kind of different and what is it that magical rites have a clear cult aim that is when you are doing a magic 
your idea is to have a objective or a goal which you will achieve through the magical rites whereas religious sermon ceremonies do not have a goal it is not intended towards a specific aim or purpose religious rites and beliefs depend on this difference between magic and religion he gives ample example if we read his work he is giving ample example of everyday life especially the three uh, main uh, ritual that he is highlighting are the initiation ceremony the death ceremony and marriage rites because if we look into the rites of passage of people these three are very important they are very crucial in terms of markers of human life and society and he uses the three rituals to explain the nature of religious belief and the function so let us understand what malinowski meant by magic he described magic as being different from both science and religion he described magic as a range of practical act which are carried out to achieve a desired result so you know we have uh, got a re- uh, a result in mind beforehand and we want to achieve that so we kind of perform that and he make a di- he makes a distinction between two types that is love magic and black magic black magic as the term itself denotes is for something which is negative it's going to hurt it's going to destroy so you are going to do a ma- black magic in order to harm someone whereas the love magic is kind of deals with uh, love fondness uh emotions so both of them are emotional one is positive the other is negative then the other type of magic which he talks about is limiting imitating or forecasting type of magic it wants to imitate the result so among the uh, primitive people if they wanted the rain to happen then they could imitate the sound the b- movement of the rain and uh, accordingly do that so it was a magical thing that they didn't know whether it's going to rain or not but they had this belief that through the magical act it might happen so this is lot of imitation and then the f- third type is simple magic so this kind of uh, very immediate you have a very immediate uh, result and you perform this magic so what is common among the different type and that is a force the unseen force upon which the success is dependent so there is lot of mystery uh, because you know and this mystery or which is kind of the magical spell is also something which is not uh, easily found among all the members of the society there are certain people who have control over it that is a musician and he would pass down either to his uh, inheritors or to his students so this kind it contains a formula though, though both magic and religion contains formula they the utterance of magical formula is different so ma- let's now look into the similarities so first we will look into what is the similarity between magic and science so like science magic has a specific aim related with human needs and instinct so we know that uh, when we do a experiment in a laboratory a scientific experiment we know that it has to produce a result similarly is the case of magic so both are governed by a system of rules which determines how a certain act can be effectively performed so when we are doing an experiment in the laboratory of science experiment it has certain protocols which are mentioned and if you miss out any of the steps then the experiment will be a failure similarly a magician has a set of rules which he has to follow for the magical spell to be successful number 2 the similarity between magic and science is that both science and magic develop techniques you know so you have certain tools and techniques so we you know you require certain equipments you require certain tools to do the experiment and the magical spell so when we look into magic and science then we can agree with james fraser's idea that magic was a pseudo science so it was magic from magic that we learned or we developed the techniques we developed the rules and we became more rational it became science so fraser says that magic was pseudo science now let us look into the difference between magic and science so if you look into science is general you know day to day experience of everyday life 
So, what is happening around you the experiments are related it is based on observation and reason over the interaction with nature. Most of the scientific experiments say we are talking about how the plant manufactures food or how the solar system functions. So, it is related to the everyday interaction with nature. Magic on the other hand deals with certain emotional aspects. It is based on the emotion for instance you are an individual uh, does not want his partner or her partner to be successful in business or in any kind of competition then there is an emotions attached will do a black magic to ensure that so and so is unsuccessful. Science is found on the conviction that experience effort and reasons are valid you know you have to have a valid experience a valid reason for doing that experiment whereas if you look into magic there is nothing certain the magical spell can be successful it could be a failure. So, there is lot of dependence on hope you know you do not have a justified answer of why a magical spell failed it could be just hope that it will be a successful. So, the element of accountability is less in magic compared to science. The fourth difference between magic and science is that science is based on reason you know ration, rational thought and it is based on observation, experiment, the everyday interaction with nature while magic is born of tradition. And tradition in the sense that it is one particular tradition uh, where we know the magician by certain name by a certain clan which is handed down from one generation to the other. The fifth difference is scientific knowledge is open to one unlike magic being taught only to a few. Science has its basis in the idea of natural force while magic arises from the impersonal force. So, the an impersonal force you know there are lot of terms used in many society. It is in Melanesia it is called mana, Australia it is called alinquita. So, what is this basically talking is that scientific knowledge anybody can learn. You kind of go uh, register yourself, enroll yourself uh, as a student and you can be learned. Whereas, the magic arts or the spells is not kind of taught in any kind of educational institutes it is a personal uh, knowledge which depends on who the magician wants to pass down. Now, the second category is the similarity between magic and religion. So, both magic and religion are under the domain of sacred why because they are exceptional they are not everything but are kind of born out of certain emotional need of the society. And many a time both of it provide us an escape from the emotional stress. Both are associated with mythological tradition taboos and practice which separate them from the area of profane. The difference between magic and religion magical acts are means to a definite end you know. So, as already said that you have an objective or a goal and you perform that magical spell to meet that end religion does not have any objective or goal it is self contained it is self fulfillment. So, every member is a part every member of the community is a part of this religious activity though directly or indirectly. So, you are not necessarily required any specific kind of knowledge or skills to be a part of it. The second difference is the practical art of magic is limited you know we already said it has a technique it has a tool. So, there is a limitation only those who have learned the magical spell can perform and it is learn knowledge of the techniques and tool. Religion is complex and the purpose it ha uh, is kind of more holistic it does not have any tools and technique. Religion is kind of a way of life it tells a certain code of conduct of every individual to live the life as it is desired by the society. The third difference is magical belief concerns one's simple faith in one's power to bring about certain result. Religion on the other hand is out of the domain of certain supernatural powers. So, the magical art is handed down from one generation to the other learned by certain category religion 
ev is a priority it exists before we are born and it will continue to exist irrespective of the purpose so people are automatically part of the religious life magic has both negative and positive type whereas religion is only beneficial it does not have anything negative so when we look into the three domains we you know he will be talk malinowski's idea was to help us understand how primitive life has a rational scientific thinking and how magic religion and science perform its own specific functions and it is kind of required for maintaining the integration of the society with this i come to an end of today's lecture thank you